So basically, what we are trying to understand is how the eukaryotic cell maintains its organelles, um, forms its organelles. We use peroxisome as a model, and in essence, what we try to understand is how, uh, what mechanisms the cell uses to uh, transport newly synthesized proteins into the lumen of the organelle. That's basically our main interest. Being from, from molecular biology, of course, I can only answer yes. Molecular biology is an empirical science in the sense that you have to make experiments, either in the lab or in silico, but you always have to make experiments, or in other words, to put an hypothesis, um, to go to the lab or to go to the computer, obtain results, interpret those results, and try to get some kind of knowledge, of new knowledge, from the results you obtain. So in that sense, of course, yes. What promotes imagination and creativity in science? I think that is to question everything. Not to believe in everything that was published before or that was passed into the textbooks by other people and put everything in question and try to obtain your own idea by doing your own experiments if what is published, if what is accepted as, as the truth is really the truth. Um, many times you will be wasting your time because uh, things are really truth, but once in a while you will be uh, faced with the fact that something is not really correct, is wrong, and then you can say it's a good thing. We, we cannot, no one can guarantee that. I mean, I think that uh, science will always be both things. There are some uh, fields in science that are really a collection of facts, but uh, uh, there is always some possibility to make some sense of all those facts and try to distill knowledge from those facts and create models, create theories. So uh, I would say both are valid. It will always be a collection of facts and a collection or, or a path for new knowledge.